Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore video game content that goes unused, altered, or normally unseen. Back we are once again with another Pokemon Lost Bits video covering the recent leaks, this time for the second generation of games, Gold and Silver. This is what, my like, fourth time covering these games? Anyways, as you probably already know by now, amongst the other Nintendo leaks this year, the source code and more were also leaked for Pokemon Gold and Silver, and with it a bunch of new findings were discovered. And also joining me this video is hacker extraordinaire Nekorun, who has helped me out with this series numerous times throughout the years. Hey guys and girls, Nekorun here. While we won't be going over absolutely everything from these leaks, we'll do our best to generally highlight some of the most interesting stuff from scrap Pokemon designs, altered areas, and more. Anyways, so with all of that said, it's time to once again dive into the Johto region to find some more Lost Bits. Okay, so let's first start things off with what I'm sure you and I will all agree is the most interesting stuff to come out of these leaks, the scrapped and or altered Pokemon designs. Now, I already went over all of the ones discovered in a Space World 1997 demo leaked a few years ago, so I won't be going over those in this video again, but if you're interested, be sure to check out that video by clicking on the card right here. Anyways, let's first shift our attention to the sprites dated to May 6th, 1998. The sprites for the Gen 1 Pokemon here range from being the same as in Pokemon Blue to the final updated look seen in the second Gen games. But that's not what we're here for, are we? So let's get to the Gen 2 stuff. So first we got this black silhouette fella, who is seemingly playing some sort of flute. This Pokemon is apparently based on Kokopelli, a deity in some Native American cultures, and this Pokemon is believed to have been reworked into the Pokemon we now know as Celebi. Then there's this thin worm-like Pokemon, which based on its similarity and it appearing right before Gorotesu, who is seen in the Space Run 97 beta, it is believed it was to be its pre-evolution. Next is this scrapped fox-looking Pokemon, which I bet was shelved and then later reworked into Fennekin. Then there's this evolution line of Pokemon, starting with this armless, Kirby knockoff-looking guy, evolving into having some ears, and then finally these two. Now there's never been a stage 3 evolution in any Pokemon line, so either these are just two alternate designs, or it could be a split evolution, as seen with Politoed and Poliwrath. Additionally, some believe that based on this design, for this Pokemon here, this could have actually been Pikachu's original design. Pokemon designer Atsuko Nishida described Pikachu's prototype design as a creature shaped like a Daifuku, a Japanese mochi ball with ears sticking out. And apparently it was nothing like the Pikachu we know today. This certainly doesn't confirm anything, but yeah, I'd say the description checks out. Moving on, there's this elephant-looking Pokemon, and it's believed to have been related to that one unused elephant Pokemon sprite I mentioned in the Gen 1 leaks video. Then there's this Kiwi Bird Pokemon, this Scorpion who probably got reworked into Skaroopy, this Egg Bird Pokemon, this bird Pokemon shaped like a musical treble clef that was very likely reworked into Chatot, who is shaped like a musical note. Then there's this Quillfish, who is related to either this early Pokemon, or, you know, Quillfish. Next up, there's this boar Pokemon, this dog-looking Pokemon that looks related to this other unused dog Pokemon from the Space World 97 demo. Then there's this ghost Pokemon that's apparently wearing what's called a Hitaika Kushi. This fish Pokemon with fins that looks like oars on a ship. Then there's this large dog-like Pokemon that might have been a planned evolution for Arcanine. And this fella, who also looks like that other prototype Pikachu-looking one I mentioned earlier. Then we have this snake-like Pokemon wearing what looks to be some sort of Native American-inspired headdress. This bird Pokemon that kind of looks like Spearow. This gargoyle Pokemon. This fish Pokemon that was seen in the Space World 97 demo. But here it apparently looks like it was to evolve into these other fish Pokemon that weren't seen there. Next is what looks like a flying squirrel Pokemon with a sword on its back. A fox Pokemon that was probably reworked into Furret. A stork Pokemon. A drill-themed squid Pokemon. This Pokemon appears to be an earlier version of Burmy, or even Pineco, which would have evolved into this moth-like Pokemon. And we're still not done yet. Next is this Koala Pokemon, a Tanuki Pokemon that appears to be carrying a burning backpack. Yet another bird Pokemon, this time with its beak shaped like a megaphone, it too is believed to possibly have been an early version of Chatot. This frog Pokemon that was likely made into Politoed, a strange mohawked hippo Pokemon. 
This skeleton Pokemon, this Pokemon with very large ears, these two fly-looking Pokemon, a plant Pokemon similar to Sunflora, a small dinosaur-looking Pokemon, a cherry blossom one, this one that is believed to have been reworked into Dunsparce, this armored fish or seal-looking Pokemon, and finally, yet another bird. Well, it also kind of looks like a fish, so I guess a flying fish Pokemon, maybe. Then, although not a newly discovered Pokemon by any means, there's also this early design of Cyndaquil. This certainly looks way closer to the final design than the original design Firestarter for this generation, but here spikes on Cyndaquil's back appear solid and not made of fire, so from this it's still unclear if it was even a fire type at this point in development or not. And that's just from one set of data. Now next, let's have a look at the scrap Pokemon designs from another Space World demo, this time from 1999. These mostly appear to be just early versions of those that would later to go on to be used in the final game, which makes sense since this was way later in the game's development. There's this early version of Azumarill that shows up yellow. I guess it was altered since it looks a bit too similar to Meryl. Then there's this early version of Sunkern that's literally just a seed with a leafy stem. Then we also got early versions of Lantern, Wooper, look at this little guy. This winking blob that's apparently an early version of Wobbuffet, which fun fact is actually the same shape as the Wobbuffet sprite here flipped upside down. Then there's this skinny shuckle, an updated design from the one we discussed earlier, but still different version of Dunsparce. This early design of Fortress that definitely looks more like Pinaco. There's this early placeholder design of Larvitar that's looking pretty basic. And finally, there's this early design of Celebi that seems to be somewhat of a halfway point between the Cocopelli design and the one that's used in the final game. And interestingly, in this demo, it's still listed as a plant Pokemon rather than a time travel Pokemon. And those, my friends, are all the scrapped and altered Pokemon designs. Some were definitely more complete than others, and some ideas definitely got revisited in future generations. Either way, I think it's interesting to see what could have been, and which Pokémon were given the green lights, and which were shelved. Now moving on from the Pokémon, next are several areas that appear different in this leaked Space World 99 prototype compared to the final release. Now granted, most of these are pretty minor changes. Stuff like just some simple tile set updates like, for example, here in the Pokémart, the Goldenrod City Game Corner, and Olivine Port. Other differences include added or removed cash registers in the department stores, a different layout for the train station in Goldenrod City, and even adding this old lady here in the entrance to the Elix Forest. Stuff like some flower and tree placements here and there were also changed, but nothing too crazy. Then the more noticeable changes include the removal of the water segment here on Route 26, this section here near the ruins of Alf, the trees were completely changed in Ilex Forest, the sections here and here in the Union Cave. This pink stripe at the top of the Goldenrod Gym was replaced with plants and flowers. In a similar way, the top of the Mahogany City Gym was altered. The Viridian City Gym is almost completely different, as are all the rooms of the members of the Elite Four, for Koga, Will, Bruno, and Karen. And of course, even the Champion's Room was altered, made to be a bit longer than seen in the Space World demo. The rest of the altered areas are again just more updated tile sets or very small changes like moving a rock or two at best. Next, references to several unused moves have also been uncovered. The most notable of these is Gold Breath which is believed to be a scrap move for Ho-Oh, similarly to Silver Breath which is believed to have been meant for Lugia, Crystal Eye which based on the name is believed to have been for Suicune, and lastly, there's this move, Mysterious Letter, which is currently unknown exactly which Pokemon would have had this move, but with Letter in its name, it's likely it could have either been Unknown or maybe even Delibird. Alright, now let's check out some of the music that's unused in the leaked 1999 Space World demo, but unused in the final release. First is an alternate version of the bicycle theme that's used in the demo in the National Park, the Goldenrod Radio Tower, and the Bug Catching Contest. Here's a quick comparison of the two. Interestingly enough though, the final bicycle theme is implemented in this demo when actually riding the bike, 
So I guess they just didn't have music for these areas yet, and decided to just slap on the alternate bike theme instead. Then there's this prototype version of the title screen. There's an early version of the Newbark Town theme. And the next, there are some tracks that are similar, they just use different instrumentation. This is the case for Azalea Town and Blackthorn City. Cherry Grove City and Mahogany Town. and Professor Oak's Lab, which in the demo sounds pretty basic in comparison to the final version. Moving along, several trainer sprites also either ended up going unused in the final version, or they appeared altered in this leaked 1999 demo. For the ones that ended up cut from the final version, there are the Gen 1 Elite 4 members, Lorelai and Agatha, who were replaced by Karen and Koga respectively in the final. But here they have completely new sprites, suggesting that they might still have been planned to return. And this solidifies what I went over in the normal Pokemon Gen 2 Lost Bits video where I mentioned that in the 1997 Space World demo, there the Elite Four also still consisted of Gen 1 trainers Bruno, Lorelei, Misty, and Giovanni. These were again likely placeholders until new trainers were designed, but why Lorelei and Agatha got new sprites here is the real question. Even more interesting I find is that the Lorelei sprite here looks to be the same pose as Karen's, so it's almost as if they were looking to keep Lorelei, but then redesigned her last minute as a different character. And speaking of our boy Giovanni, there's also a sprite from the 1999 demo that's just a touched up one from the Gen 1 games. This too is probably a leftover from the 1997 demo in which Giovanni could be found in the Goldenrod Radio Tower. This was of course ultimately scrapped, and Giovanni is never encountered in the original Gen 2 games. Other alter trainer graphics include the scientists, which in the demo use the sprite of Kurt, Janine, who used to have a pose similar to Koga from Gen 1, the rival, who defaults to the engineer sprite in the demo, the male rocket executive defaults to the sportsman sprite, the female rocket executive is linked to the unused sprite of the also unused design of Blaine from Gen 1, Skiers use the sprite of a male teacher, and lastly, the Border Trainer class defaults to the Soldier sprite instead. Most of these trainer classes aren't actually used in the demo and are instead replaced by other trainer types, obviously because the correct sprites weren't properly implemented yet. Alright, and last up for this video, although not unused in any of the demo leaks, there are several other miscellaneous things that have also been uncovered in this leak. First off is the famous code that was implemented to the game to make it possible to add the Kanto region and more. This of course was a compression code written by the late Satoru Iwata, who is credited with greatly improving this gen of Pokemon games. Interestingly, the date attached to this code is close to that of the development time of Kirby's Dream Land, which is also for the Game Boy, so it's likely that Mr. Iwata originally wrote this code for that game. Either way, this compression code is considered by many fans to be a big part of Pokemon history. Next are some more miscellaneous unused graphics. 
These include early versions of the title screen logo, where it appears a working title for the game was actually Pokemon 2. I'm sure glad uh, this naming convention for Pokemon sequels didn't continue. Then there's this early unused graphic for the berry trees, as well as this early design of the protagonist, which appears to predate even the 1997 Space World demo. Overall pretty similar, just slightly different clothing, spikier hair, and a slightly different pose. Then finally are these unused graphics for Imakuni. If you're a fan of the Pokemon trading card game, you might recognize Imakuni from some of those strange cards back in the day. Anyways, Tomoaki Imakuni is a Japanese musician who helped promote the TCG around this time. He was basically a pink guy of the era, I suppose. The recently leaked source code for these games also revealed that he was planned to be seen in the Goldenrod City Radio Tower, where he was going to be a radio host. These graphics here, though, are apparently placeholder graphics for a once-planned system in which a Pokémon would follow you around, like Pikachu does in Pokémon Yellow. This mechanic, too, was ultimately scrapped. But just imagine playing through Pokémon Gold or Silver with this guy following you around. And lastly, several internal memos and correspondence between the developers of these games has also been leaked. For potential legal and privacy reasons, I'll stray from mentioning any names and such, but I'll go over some of the correspondence that I found more interesting. Highlights include a certain Game Freak higher up sending a memo that he was receiving too many rude comments from the debug team, and a request for these comments to get filtered out for him, some staff members complaining about not being able to obtain a shiny Pokémon, some patch notes mentioning things like having to change the trainer names Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts to Picnic Girl and Camp Boy, probably due to avoid risk with the Boy Scouts brand. Then there's this memo absolutely roasting the Nintendo of Europe debugging team for not being reliable and as such having them only take care of text-related stuff, which even then they apparently did a poor job of. Like dang, this person went all in on Nintendo of Europe. There's also these Q&A style files where the developers answer some questions, like I mentioned with the employee not getting the shiny Pokémon earlier. These were pretty interesting to read through, and the responses were sometimes pretty funny. And this is all just scratching the surface of what we have here. There are just so many different files here that unfortunately, I simply don't have the time to go over them all for this video. Maybe one day when I have some free time, I'll skim over more of these and see what else I can find. Amongst these, there was also some Excel files that reveal some pretty basic layouts of several planned areas in the game, which I thought was pretty cool. And finally, and perhaps the most strange, are several files that when I try to open them in a word processor program, the text All Work and No Play makes Jack a dull boy shows up, written several times. Kinda creepy. And this is a pretty obvious reference to the movie The Shining. Like I said, all of this is just scratching the surface here. As always though, it was really fun to dig around in these files, as I'm sure this certainly wasn't supposed to be seen by civilians like us. Always a joy to peep these stages of game development, and here we're able to see an even more raw side to it. And with that wraps up this video covering some more Pokemon Gen 2 Lost Bits, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to drop a like down below, and if you haven't yet, check out the other video I made recently on more Pokemon Gen 1 leaks by clicking on the card right here. And again, a special thanks to Nekorun for joining and helping out with today's video. Thanks for having me on Tetra. If you're interested in more video game hacking content, consider visiting my channel, Deep Game Research, where I dig deeper into games and bring to light what the devs left hidden in the code. Until then, Nekorun out. Also, be sure to subscribe here for future videos, swing by my other social media things which are all linked down in the description below, and if you want to support the channel, check out my merch over at tetrabitgaming.com, or consider becoming the latest member of the Bit Club to get some nifty extra channel perks. Click on the join button below for more information. Anyways guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in a bit.